Unlike Bhaktivinoda Thakur, from the very beginning, he had knowledge of uh, Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhaktivinoda Thakur only discovered about uh, some way through his life, he discovered Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And before that, he didn't know much about him. And later on, he said, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I thought he was, you know, some, you know, Sahaji or whatever like that. So. He didn't give much regard and later on he got serious and he began to study and then he understood the nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then he read Chaitanya Charitamrita and then he understood this is the highest teaching. So, uh, unlike that, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was born into uh, proper knowledge of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and Krishna. So, uh, very, very, he didn't have to struggle at all. So from an early age, he was also very devotional. Of course, the story is there that when uh, the Rathiyakar was there, it stopped in front of his house in Puri when Bhaktivedantaka was the magistrate and they placed him on the cart and then the garland fell off or the body, etc. So um, there were many auspicious signs when he was a small child. And of course, he grew up with... Uh, showed great intelligence. As a child, of course, he was uh, fond of uh, intellectual things and arguing and stuff like that. Uh, so he was, uh, he, he used to have debates with other students, etc. in school. Uh, but later on, uh, as he grew up, then he lost interest completely in his studies. Uh, and though he was very proficient in uh, studies, uh, including mathematics and astronomy. Uh, he kind of rejected the whole thing, and then he began to simply absorb himself in the uh, chanting of the name and preaching, uh, and, uh, of course, studying the works of all the uh, Gaudi Acharyas. Yeah. So as he grew up then, he was uh, quite, uh, or I say, extremely devoted. Uh, at the same time, he observed that many people uh, were the opposite, and therefore he was very intolerant of people who were uh, pretending to be spiritual or pretending to be followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who actually were not. So later in his writings, we see often he criticizes these different groups who uh, have all sorts of false ideas. So, uh, based on his great learning and devotion, therefore, he was able to distinguish the true devotees from those who are not devotees and uh, he tried various jobs uh, here and there uh, and then eventually he started this uh, movement uh, he gave up everything he uh, gave up his studies then he gave up work etc and then he just sat down and he began chanting the holy name in Mayapur and then after that then he began his movement huh? and uh, we see that of course at a, not a very old age he also disappeared so his movements also started quite young and it grew very quickly which is something but it actually grew quite quickly in his lifetime which was not too long huh? so um, he very vigorously began to preach uh, and uh, this was a little bit different uh, because this was a an organized uh, movement that he established. And 
that he had uh, preachers, etc., in that movement. Uh, previously, the devotees of Chichanya Mahaprabhu, basically, there were uh, caste Goswamis who had a few disciples and they would teach them, and that was it. There was no movement as such to go out and preach to the public and whatever. But uh, Bhakti uh, Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's aim was to communicate with everybody and uh, expose them to Lord Chaitanya's teachings and Nam San Kirtan. So he established a movement to do that, an organization. Uh, uh, to a small degree, of course, Bhakti Vinod Thakur did so, uh, but it was not so uh, uh, well organized and developed as that of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So he established a whole movement. Uh, uh, he was in Mayapur, then he went to Calcutta, and then he got properties there, and he established the movement and made uh, the temple there, and got devotees in various places. And those, uh, uh, the brahmacharis began vigorously preaching. So he established an organization with the brahmacharis in it who became equipped with preaching, and then they went out and they uh, talked to people uh, about the... Um, philosophy and movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this way he established that movement and it spread uh, surprisingly in a time when India itself was very unstable. <laughs> it was still under the British, uh, but the uh, people were the nationalists were there making something like this, you know, and in the midst of that there was the, the war started uh, between the First World and the Second World War again and that was there. There was all sorts of catastrophes and you know, famines and diseases going on, etc. Nevertheless, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur persevered and his movement seemed to expand in that whole period when between the wars, the, the First World War and the Second World War, quite uh, dramatically. Uh, and we see that he, is, he actually uh, was not able to preach, but through that preaching, he got funds so he could establish temples. They, they, they got properties and they established temples all throughout India. I don't know the exact number, but quite a few temples were there. So, yeah, within their, uh, you know, within that short period of time. Yeah. So even in, in Madras, there's a temple. We got Bombay Temple and Delhi and um, Nami Saranya or whatever, <laughs> different places. They had temples all over the place. So this is quite a remarkable feat at that time. Uh, a very rapidly expanding movement. So that was his um, contribution, that he was able to establish a movement which spread very quickly in his uh, lifetime, even though it was not so long. Uh, so and it, uh, the, uh, one of his remarkable features, of course, was his uh, uh, strong uh, intelligence based on scripture, by which he could uh, defeat others and um, convince others of the of philosophy Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and establish it on very firm ground. Uh, because of that, he was able to spread uh, the movement quite nicely in his uh, lifetime. So he established a movement like that. Unfortunately, after he disappeared, then uh, that movement began to, about 10 years afterwards, I think it was, then it began to gradually uh, break up into different groups. And each of the sannyasis went his own way and established his own uh, mat. Uh, so, but, uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, he saw that uh, unfortunate uh, disintegration of the mud, and when he saw that, then he was trying to figure out how to prevent that <laughs> in Iskon. Huh? Uh, so that's what we see in his uh, writings. We often we, he refers to that how the Yodhya mud broke up. So uh, he was very. Um, uh, worried that his own movement would not follow the same fate and break up into different factions. So that was one of his uh, main uh, uh, things. Now the, the the movement broke up because of the uh, different uh, personalities there, all trying to be leaders, basically. They all set up their own organization like that. Uh, so, uh, Prabhupada was not too impressed with all that um, because at the expense of well, that was at the expense of preaching because they all had small little movements and they were uh, just located in their own particular temple and then they weren't expanding the preaching at all so after that we don't get many 
temples opening up anywhere. Huh? Uh, and even the temples that were there, basically, they were just maintaining. Uh, so, uh, Prabhupada, therefore, was very, very uh, upset with that, and that's why uh, he took preventative measures to prevent a uh, breakup of ISKCON um, in a similar way. Now, of course, we see that ISKCON did survive 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and whatever, so it's gone on. <laughs> so it's like, um, what is that, 40, oh, 40 something years, I guess it is now. Oh, 40 years? 41 years? Uh, so, um, uh, it has survived that long, and we have to find means of trying to preserve it in the future. So we can take examples from um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's life also uh, to um, inspire us to carry on this movement and uh, keep it unified. Um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would never thought of a divided movement. <laughs> and that's why he established all those centers all around, etc. So um, we should also think of in terms of how to spread the movement uh, as a, a unified organization, not as some uh, separate parts or whatever like that. And uh, therefore we have to be a little intelligent. The um, circumstances are quite different in one sense nowadays. Uh, society is quite different. And moreover, the movement has spread all over the world. It's not just India and, uh, I guess, Burma. <laughs> At his time, there was Burma and uh, India. Basically, that's where the movement spread. But now it's all around the world, so it's a little more complex in that way. Uh, and uh, not just in terms of uh, nationality, but in terms of governments, in terms of culture, in terms of um, attitudes, etc. Uh, there's quite a few differences. Nevertheless, uh, we have to somehow try to keep the movement together in spite of all of these uh, differences. So that requires some uh, study and uh, great um, wisdom on the part of the leaders of ISKCON. Uh, uh, so when Prabhupada was present, then he kept the movement together. So uh, the whole problem is, after Srila Prabhupada, what do we do? So when Prabhupada was there, if there was a problem, he makes a decision and everybody follows and they don't quarrel, well, scripture says that, don't, why we have to do it this way, why we have to do it that way, scripture says that. So, no, they wouldn't, whatever Prabhupada said, they would just follow. <laughs> but now, not like that because Prabhupada's not there. So then we have to rely on scripture or what would Prabhupada do? Maybe we know, maybe we don't know. Some, Prabhupada, some people say Prabhupada would do this, Prabhupada would do that. We don't really know, so we have to be very careful how we proceed in any case. Huh? So, uh, but we should ultimately uh, try to keep the movement together. Prabhupada had that idea, and he was inspired by the uh, activities of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati to do that. So, we should um, follow the inspiration of both of them, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Srila Prabhupada, and keep us united. <laughs>